What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. In this channel, we talk about looking good and smelling amazing. So if you're a person that loves to look good and smell great as well, and this is probably going to be some interesting content for you, I recommend you go ahead and hitting the subscribe button, especially since it's free, you know, and go ahead and hit that like button. <laughs> go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit the bell icon as well. That way you get notified every time I release new content on the channel. So today, guys, I'm going to be doing another installment of my top five. Uh, if you're familiar with that uh, segment here on this channel, what I do is I take a particular house and I just like to talk about and uh, tell you guys about the top five fragrances that I found to be the top five from that particular house. And today we're going to be featuring the house of Frederick Mall. I think it was around the year of 2000, Frederick Mall started uh, this particular brand. And what he did was he didn't create the fragrances himself, but what he did was brought in some of the best perfumers, some of the best noses in the industry to create what I would consider to be some of the most quality fragrances from a niche brand. What I love about these fragrances are the quality. I'm telling you right now, uh, it's really, really hard to beat the quality that you're going to get in these fragrances and offerings from this house. So I'm going to be talking to you guys about what I've considered to be the top five from the brand to my nose. So if you want to hear what those fragrances are, then you know the routine. Keep it locked right here. All right, guys, I'm back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. Let's go ahead and jump right into these fragrances. Now, I will say um, I have smelled quite a few uh, offerings from this house. Um, I don't own all of them, of course, but I have taken my time to really get my nose on samples. I've gone into stores and really took my time smelling fragrances from this house. I mean, of course, you guys know that these fragrances are not uh, cheap by any means. It is not really easy to really find these heavily discounted as well. So when you invest into a fragrance or a bottle from Frederick Mall, you want to make sure that you are getting a fragrance that you really uh, are going to like. I do not recommend blind buying any of these fragrances because they are expensive. But so these are five that I will say that I've really taken my time to really, you know, kind of scour uh, the brand and scour the offerings from the house. And these are the five that I've come up with. A uh, quick honorable mention goes to Lee's Mediterranean. I think that's how you pronounce that. I do own that fragrance, but it did not make uh, this list. I do like it, but it does feature a note of uh, 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 lilac. I think or lily so it's a very very floral fragrance but it's really really clean it's good there's some masculine elements in there too as well that would definitely make it unisex but it just missed the cut but i did want to at least do an honorable mention for lee's mediterranean first fragrance up on the list today this one is called iris poudre iris poudre is the name of the fifth spot right here in this one was done by Pierre Bourdon. Uh, he comprised and put this fragrance together. And I want to say I absolutely love this fragrance. Now, as the name indicates, you are going to get some iris from this fragrance, but it's not overly powdery. You know, there is a powdery vibe that you get from the iris in this, but it's not overly powdery. So if typically you're not a fragrance, um, so typically if you're not a fan, of fragrances that may have the note, feature the note of iris, you may still want to give this one a go. There are a lot of other floral notes in this fragrance besides iris, like yangilang, jasmine, lily, so it is carnation, so it is very floral, but there are some other notes that really balance out the florals in this fragrance, and that's what I've really started to really appreciate about this house. I mean, I'm starting to really go to this house for my florals because they are so well crafted. They are so well done. But again, they usually have other notes in these fragrances that really uh, allow them to lean unisex where guys can really wear them as well. And this is one of the ones that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, outside of the floral uh, elements in Iris Poudre, you're also gonna get a nice musk note. And the musk really works well to kind of give some balance to this fragrance. It has a nice uh, vetiver. Uh, note on the dry down, so you start to get a little bit of an earthier tone from the vetiver. 
but it's a little bit more of a, of a clean variety, honestly, uh, the way that it comes across on my skin at least. And you also have some nice sweetness and creaminess from sandalwood and vanilla when it really gets into the heart of the dry down. So the dry down is really, really beautiful. Um, but I would say that the musk is a note that's really used to give a lot of balance and provide some balance for this scent. So guys, don't be turned off by the name Iris Poudre. It does feature, again, as I said, some florals in this, but guys can definitely rock this. So this comes in at the fifth spot from the house of Frederick Mall, done by Pierre Baudon. This is Iris Poudre. All right, guys, and coming in at the fifth spot, this one is Carl Flower. Carl Flower. Now, if you guys have been a fan of my channel for any amount of time, you probably heard me say uh, that I really don't like one note typically in fragrances, and that's the note of tuberose. Because a lot of the fragrances that I smelled before, it was really, really hard for me to pull off tuberose. You know, you guys know I'm one of the guys that, you know, I'll wear a fragrance that most guys will say will lean feminine in a heartbeat because I, I believe the way that you kind of present yourself, you know, your swag, the, you know, the clothes that you have on can kind of offset a lot of times a fragrance that may typically lean uh, feminine because you have a very masculine presentation of yourself in a suit. So that's kind of my secret behind how you can pull off a, a fragrance that may lean a little bit more feminine. But this particular fragrance, the primary note is tuberose. So it really came as a shock to me once I actually got a chance to put this on my skin, how much I really started to love and appreciate this fragrance. Now this fragrance does feature uh, tuberose absolute, which is a very high concentration of the note of tuberose. So again, I was even more surprised that I like this, but guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, for me personally, when I put this on my skin, I love the use in the note of coconut in fragrances. And this has a very, very high concentration of coconut as well. And coconut works really, really well with tuberose. It works really, really well with that the note of tuberose. So I love the way this one plays on my skin. Again, this is another one that could lean a little bit feminine but again for me i love this one i love this fragrance and that's why i made my top five this one was done by uh dominique ropion and from what i understand it took him about two years to really put this fragrance together so needless to say there was a lot of time and effort that it went into composing corn flower and i think it was time well spent amazing uh, tuberose based fragrance from the house of Frederick Mall. This one is Carnal Flower. Next up on the list, guys, this one comes in at the third spot. Man, I am really falling in love with this fragrance. If I did this fragrance maybe a couple months from now, this may be even higher because that's how much I really love this stuff. This one is called French Lover. French Lover. This comes in at the third spot. Another fragrance that was composed by Pierre Bardon. And this one, guys, this is a spicy, woody, green scent. This fragrance can really be summed up well by those three scent characters. Again, spicy, woody, and green. That's what you get out of the scent. Again, I like to use the reference of Cree Spice and Wood because to me this does smell very similar to Cree Spice and Wood. But it has more green undertones to it and a little bit more honestly uh, as the name of creed spice and wood would indicate a little bit more woody uh fragrance to me um guys i'm telling you right now if you want a fragrance that's very very masculine and and, and just sexy this is the one right here man i mean listen to the name french lover this stuff right here is good i mean it's not just good it's really really good and to make this list, because they have a lot of very well done fragrances in this collection. So to make the list of the top five is saying a lot. I love this stuff. Of course, we're talking about the House of Frederick Mall today. And coming in at the third spot, this one is French Lover. All right, fellas, we're down to the top two fragrances. And coming in at the number two spot for me is this one right here, Portrait of a Lady. Portrait of a Lady. Now, don't be thrown off by the name of this fragrance. It says Portrait of a Lady. But to me, this fragrance really paints the portrait of just a person that's really, really well 
put together. That could be male or female. It has one of the notes in it, of course, that you guys know that I love. This one features a note of rose, but I've talked about this one a lot, so you know how I feel about it. It has rose, but again, it's very, very masculine. It's a masculine rose fragrance because you start talking about notes like incense and patchouli, which are two other star players of this fragrance. And again, that's a recipe for an uh, awesome unisex fragrance that can be rocked equally well by both men and women. I love this stuff, and until recently, this was probably my number one scent from this house. But I got my nose on a, a newer uh, bottle of the number one spot, and at that point in time, I flipped between my number one and number two fragrance. But again, it was very, very close between this and the number one, but this comes in at the number two spot. This one is Portrait of a Lady. And guys, coming in at the number one spot for me, this one right here is called Musk Ravageur. Musk Ravageur. Like I just said before, uh, this was a, probably a close second to Portrait of a Lady. Uh, the original bottle of Musk Ravageur that I had was produced in the year 2010. Uh, the more newer bottles from this house have a cap like this. It's a little bit more of a shinier cap and it has the uh, white uh, writing and insignia on the cap. These are the newer uh, batches of these fragrances. I think this company was purchased by Estee Lauder, if I'm not mistaken. So the older bottles were had more of a matte black finish, did not have the white writing on the top. But anyway, so the original bottle of this that I had was from 2010, and that fragrance was a little bit more animalic. Uh, it was a little bit heavier on the clove note. And for some people, that was kind of a detractor. I used to say people would have to spray, spray that fragrance. I would recommend you spray Musk Ravage Your about maybe 20 minutes or so before you left the house to give that opening a little bit of time to calm down because that dry down with the cinnamon, that cinnamon vibe that you got was so good. But guys, guess what? With the newer formulations, you don't have to wait. And for me personally, this made me love and appreciate this fragrance even more. The newer batches of this are not as heavy on the clove note. You get more of the good stuff that people really love about Musk Ravageur in the opening. Again, the cinnamon, the musk, the vanilla, some of the sweeter elements. And I'm telling you right now, for me, that took it to the next level. This is my number one fragrance from the house of Frederick Maul, Musk Ravageur. Oh, man. This stuff is just good, man. It's just good. Guys, if you've never smelled it, get a sample of it if you like gourmands it, 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 it kind of leans gourmand because of the cinnamon and vanilla in this scent but it's very masculine as well you got the musk in there kind of rise throughout the fragrance from opening to close this is good from start to finish man my number one frederick mall fragrance which was done by maurice roussel is musk ravageur Guys, that's it. That's my time. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video as I gave you guys my top five fragrances from the house of Frederick Mall. I always appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in because, of course, I know you could have been anywhere else in the world doing anything else, but you took the time out to watch this video, and I sincerely appreciate that. Now, don't forget to take the time to like, comment, and subscribe, and share these videos out to folks that you think could use this information or find me entertaining because I am your main man, Darren, the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good, keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side.